Hello and welcome back to Realistic Fish Keeping. Today's video is something I thought might be quite interesting. I've been planning on crossing two of my guppy strains for a while now and I had the idea of asking ChatGPT what it thought the outcome would be. I wasn't expecting the detailed response I got, never mind an image with a breakdown of three offspring generations. So I decided to make my own prediction based on my experience breeding guppies and what knowledge I have of genetics. I'm no expert, but let's see who's closest. So remember to subscribe so you can see the outcome of this video. I plan on breeding these fish in the next week or two. After that, I'll put the follow-up video up for everybody to see. So let's take a look at the actual fish that we're going to breed. Here we have the albino koi ribbon guppies. The females have strong orange coloured heads, white bodies, and some express the ribbon gene, which just means long fins. The male's mostly red, and males expressing the ribbon gene are unlikely to be able to breed, so it's always a good idea to breed a carrier male to a female showing the gene. Next we have the albino full red blue dumbo guppies. Males have blue pectorals. Some have larger pectorals than others. They also have a shimmer of blue down their backs. Interestingly, females are all blue with no red at all. That's because the red coloration in this strain is a Y chromosome related gene, meaning females don't show red, but they carry it. So let's get on with it. What are our predictions for the cross? Let's play. Chat GPT versus Realistic Fish Keeper. <laughs> So starting off with the parents that I already have, this is ChatGPT's drawing of the parents, and this is mine. Now I know what you're thinking, quit your day job and become an artist because that belongs in an art gallery. Well, maybe one day, but let's have a look at the obvious difference, other than mine being clearly better. I've put on four fish and labelled males and females, whereas Chat chose to predict just one pair crossing. I trust to add the partner of both fish as I think it's a good idea to cross two pairs rather than just one. Because further down the line you can cross cousins rather than siblings. Next we see the offspring that chat GPT expects to see, which by the way is male and I chose to draw both male and female, as I expected them to look different initially. Chat expects the male to be more like the coy female, with the white body can still show the red tail of the male and the blue pectorals. I expect the males of the offspring to vary, but for them to be duller in colour in general, but still mainly red, since this is the dominant gene which both parents will have copies of. Females expect to be typically colourless, which is normal for female guppies due to their lack of Y chromosome, which is where many of the colour traits are located. Females often still have colour in their tail, however, and I predict just a little bit of red, perhaps a hint of blue mixed in. In the next generation, Chap predicts that the males will be much bluer than the previous generation, the orange head has come through on this generation. It's important to say that this generation is a result of inbreeding siblings from F1 generation and not breeding back to parents. Breeding back to parents allows for great control over which traits you want to keep. For example, if I wanted to speed up and enhance the development of, say, the blue pectoral fins, I would breed F1 to the albino full red blue Dumbo parents. For the orange head to become more prominent, 
I would breed F1 to the albino koi ribbon parents. But breeding siblings keeps all of the traits more balanced and less likely to push them in one direction or the other. It's also important to note that neither myself or ChatGPT paid much attention to the ribbon gene in the prediction. But just imagine some of these fish, say around 50%, with, would carry it in F1. It then becomes tricky to calculate because you'd need to breed off a male without the gene showing, as I mentioned earlier, and it just becomes difficult to follow after that. So let's just continue as we are, but still thinking that a small percentage could carry the ribbon gene into F2. But if you can imagine a long finned blue dumbo male would be quite something. Anyway, my prediction for F2 is completely different. Expecting that the colours will enhance on F1, orange heads will appear on some and blue pectorals will appear on some males. So each generation I would pick out the fish that I would perceive to be the best, the ones that were the strongest and the brightest in general, and the ones showing the traits that looked most interesting. Finally, in F3, which can be considered the start of a consistent strain at that point, chat thinks that the males will practically be all blue, with just some red on the head. My final prediction is that the males of this generation will basically end up looking like their great-grandparents, but with orange heads and more orange in the body instead of the red. Females expect to have orange heads and a mix of red and blue fins. And in a way, I suppose the choices that I make in regard to which fish I pick from each generation to breed from, I am shaping the outcome of what would be next. So it may be possible to get more blue if those fish were chosen. Um, and again, on the ribbon gene, if any ribbon females showed up, I could choose those and possibly get more ribbon genes in further generations. Anyway, that's about it. What do you think would be most likely to happen? Do you have any predictions of your own? If you haven't already, subscribe. And it'd be a big help if you could like this video. Comment down below with your predictions. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.